My name is Taryn Hutchings, and I am studying plant biotechnology at the University of California, Davis. I am researching under Rahul and Kathy Pothocker at Covercrest Incorporated, located in St. Louis, Missouri. I will be presenting my work on the stacking and evaluation of herbicide tolerance with key compositional traits in pennycress. My goal was to identify triple and quadruple mutant plants from F2 seeds, which will be used as future breeding material. At the bottom of the slide, you will see the four genes and associated traits that I worked with. Acetolactate synthase, or ALS, is a mutation introduced through homology-directed repair which changes the amino acids serine 643 to isoleucine, conferring herbicide tolerance to pennycress. The next three genes I will discuss have been made non-functional through CRISPR-Cas9 mediated gene editing. Transparent testa 8, or TT8, produces a thinner yellow seed coat which increases the speed of germination. Fiber is decreased while the oil content of the seed is increased. Alkanol hydroxalkyl producing 2, or AOP2, reduces overall glucosinolates, but specifically synegrin, which imparts an undesirable taste. Lastly, fatty acid elongation 1, or FAE1, reduces erucic acid, which is unhealthy at higher levels. To begin my research, I examined the parent material of two existing populations of F2 seeds. As shown in the chart, parent 1 was heterozygous for the ALS mutation and transfer DNA, while parent 2 was homozygous for all mutations and was tDNA free. The resulting F1 progeny was screened for tDNA-free plants with the ALS mutation and then allowed to self-fertilize. I set out to identify F2 progeny, which were homozygous for all mutations known as a quadruple mutant. A similar cross was made, but omitting the AOP2 mutation, which causes undesirable phenotypes. This would become the triple mutant. Using Mendelian genetics, I determined that when screening each gene individually, 25% of the population would have the desired homozygous genotype. I made use of several molecular tools during my research. I obtained leaf material by punching each leaf with a small capillary tube and used a sigma protocol to obtain crude DNA. Single seed spectroscopy, or NIR, allowed me to screen a large population of seeds for the FAE1 genotype before planting. The resulting erucic acid levels are shown here. Levels less than 10% indicate a homozygous FAE1 mutation, whereas levels greater than 40% indicate wild type seeds. I examined the genetic sequence of each plant using Sanger sequencing. Existing knowledge of the pennycrest genome allowed me to select primers for DNA amplification and identify the location of the CRISPR-Cas9 PAM site where the mutation would be found. Comparing the wild type and template sequences identified any homozygous mutations, which is shown here by a single nucleotide change and a single set of peaks. PCR allele competitive extension, or PACE, is an assay consisting of fluorescent probes that correspond to the wild type and mutant alleles. This fluorescence is measured and used to determine the genotype of the ALS mutation. Plants exhibiting greater FAM fluorescent signal and no hex fluorescent signal are wild type for ALS. Plants exhibiting both are heterozygous, and plants exhibiting more hex are homozygous. I evaluated each gene individually so that I can narrow the population pool by 75% for each gene evaluated. I begin with measuring the F2 seeds of rusic acid levels with the NIR to identify FAE1 mutations. These seeds were planted out so that I could obtain DNA for further genotyping. I performed the PACE assay on these FAE1 mutant plants to identify plants that were also ALS mutants. I selected primers for and amplified the TT8 genomic region of each plant using PCR and sent this for Sanger sequencing to evaluate for TT8 mutations. This process was repeated for AOP2 and FAE1 in the case of the quadruple cross and was repeated for only FAE1 for the triple mutant cross. The plants having all of the desired mutations are maturing and will be harvested for seed. Mendelian genetics is clearly shown as the population decreases with each screening. For the triple mutant cross, I started with 252 seeds and narrowed this down to just a single plant. I started with 156 seeds for the quadruple mutant cross 47 of these were FAE1 mutants, 11 of these 47 were also ALS mutants, and 3 of these 11 were also TTA and AOP2 mutants. I found that the resulting 4 plants had erucic acid levels of less than 3% and that all TTA mutants were also AOP2 mutants, indicating these are genetically linked. I used similar lines of wild type and herbicide tolerant pennycrest to test 3 concentrations of pursuit herbicide at 2 growth stages. When treatments were applied at one and a half weeks and compared to a control, it is obvious that stunting occurs in the herbicide tolerant plants, while when treatments were applied at three weeks, no obvious effects can be seen. 
The graph compares the average leaf diameter of plants treated with a one times concentration at one and a half weeks over the course of 16 days. Wild type plants cease to grow and die, while herbicide tolerant plants continue to grow. I thoroughly enjoyed my research and was able to identify one triple mutant and three quadruple mutant plants. While other phenotypes will be observable later in the plant's life cycle, I was able to observe herbicide tolerance and reduced levels of erucic acid. I would like to thank the entire Covercrest team for providing a great first research experience. Thank you.